Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with Stovetop Sous Vide Duck Breast. That's right, we're going to use the same technique all those star chefs are using on TV, and we're going to do it on the stove with no special equipment. It works unbelievably well. Anyone can do it and produces a duck breast that is stunningly delicious. Okay, so I have two large duck breasts, boneless, but you have to have the skin on. Okay, don't worry about trimming anything. It's fine as is. Those are about eight ounces each. Nice big ones. Before we start, we're going to have to take a really sharp knife and make really, really shallow slashes through the skin. Do not, do not cut down to the meat. You only want about a sixteenth of an inch just through that top layer of fat. If you think you're going to cut into the meat, don't do it. So after all those cuts are made, we're going to salt that generously on the skin side. We're going to flip it, salt and pepper the other side, also generously, and then add some fresh thyme leaves. All right, thyme natural with duck. All right, once our duck has been prepped and seasoned, I'm going to put it in a heavy-duty freezer bag. Are right, you going to have to have one that seals really well? So no dollar store specials. Use a really nice name brand sealable freezer bag. All right, we're going to push those down into the corner as tight as they get. You can seal it shut almost all the way. And then we're simply going to squeeze out the air with our hands. We only need enough air out of it so it doesn't float. Okay? Squeeze all the air you can out and then finish sealing it. All right, so that method with your hands will work. If you want to get a little extra fancier, you can use a drinking straw. All right, so just stick the straw on one end, seal it almost all the way, suck out the air. By the way, I have no idea if sucking raw duck air is dangerous, so, you know, it's your own risk. And then you can seal it, okay? I'm going to refrigerate that for one hour, sort of a little marination period, while I set up my other stuff. So we're going to put those in the fridge. The rest of this stuff, very basic. All right, a large, heavy pot like this Dutch oven filled with water a very accurate thermometer, and I like to put a silicone hot pad at the bottom just for a little insulation. I've done this without that and it totally worked, but that makes me feel a little better versus having that plastic bag against the bottom. Probably doesn't matter. Bring that up to 135, okay? Put in the duck, and you can see because we got most of the air out, it sinks, which also, by the way, I think in the olden times, this would have meant the duck was a witch or something like that. All right, at this point, we're going to set our timer for one hour. And then for the next hour, here's all you have to do. Make sure your temperature stays between 130 and 140. For me, the lowest setting on my burner stays right about there. Okay? So you might have to just, you know, go up a little, go down a little. But you need to keep it right about 135 for that hour. Okay? Now, normal sous vide machines come with circulators. For this amount of meat, that's not a big deal. Once in a while, maybe I'll you know, move the bag like this to sort of move the water around. Let's say you did a little adjustment with more heat and it went up too far. Just throw some cold water in. It'll come right back down quick. Okay, So you're going to be surprised. It's not very hard to keep that at a constant 135, or at least it wasn't for me. So the idea here is we're bringing our duck up to temperature, up to the internal temperature we want, really slowly, really gently. The water is the temperature we want the inside of the meat to be. The water's at 135, we keep it in here long enough, the duck gets 135. And because it happens so gently, it makes for an incredible texture and a minimum loss of juice. After the hour, turn off the heat. Now you can leave it in this hot water while you get the rest of your stuff together. In fact, this was like 15 minutes later and it still was like at 125. Now check this out. Since this cooks so slowly and gently, very, very little moisture escaped. To finish, we're going to crisp this skin like severely. So for that, we need to dry this really well. Make sure you pat dry the skin. Another application of kosher salt. We're going to take a heavy duty skillet with just a little bit of vegetable oil or grapeseed oil or something that has a pretty high smoke point. Just a little bit. Get it hot. Put in the duck breast. Skin side down. Let that render on medium heat for five minutes, okay? Don't worry about it overcooking. The skin, the fat in the skin is gonna insulate the duck breast. And five minutes later, you're gonna turn that over for one minute. And this is one of the most magnificent sights in all of cooking. Crispy, crackly duck skin. And look at that. Is that just the most beautiful thing you've ever seen? And forget about look at, listen to.
this. I'm, I'm really sorry for that. All right, now we're almost done. Slice it, and you're going to find the most incredible, juiciest, unbelievably succulent duck meat in the history of the universe. In fact, let me focus this. Look at that. It's a perfect temperature. If this was at 135 when we started searing it, it might be at 140 now. I served mine with a really simple peach sweet and sour sauce, which I will demo. And then, oh my, I'm having a hard time narrating this part because I'm just almost beside myself with how delicious this is. Crispy skin, thin layer of that buttery duck fat underneath the crispy skin, then that meat that's just beyond description. And I know it looks pink, and some of you are freaking out it's not done. It's totally done, totally safe. An hour at 135, according to my research, plenty of time to kill anything bad. All right, I really hope you splurge, get a couple duck breasts. They're not cheap, but when you use this technique, I guarantee you're going to say that was worth every penny. All right, I hope you give it a try. This is just one of the first experiments we've done with sous vide. We're going to do a lot more. I have not been this excited about a technique in a long time. Go to the site, tons more info there, as well as the ingredients. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.